Hey guys, good morning from our Broiler Breeder Project. It's been a while since I last shared a video from the farm, you know, from the breeder unit. But hey, we're back to it and it's very, very beautiful what's happening inside here. Inside here, we have about 10,000 breeders. And these are about three months old. Now, of course, this is one of our replacement flocks, the ones to replace the old BPS to ensure that there's continuity for us to continue supplying our clients. I believe I would do it better justice if I first moved outside and explain to you guys the changes that are happening on the farm. Right here in the background, you can see our broiler breeder house. Now, of course, it's fundamentally different from the broader house that we used before. As you can see, it has been constructed from brick. Not the poles that we had before, at least for the frame outside, to give it better structural integrity. So you can see the wall over here and uh, down over here, you can see. So it's a very high chicken house. It's at least 12 feet moving to the top. And at the bottom here, as you can see, we have a very, very short wall. You can see it right here. Just three to four bricks. That's about one and a half feet, not even two feet. And that's very important because it ensures that there is enough aeration on a sunny day, on a hot day, we have enough air coming inside. So if you can look at the general size of the house, and then you look at the spaces that we've left for ventilation, it works perfectly. Now, of course, we have tarpaulin, and the purpose of the tarpaulin is to help, number one, if it rains, and there's a lot of rain, we can easily draw them down. But number two, during brooding, the tarpaulin is very important. Since the house was being used during brooding, the tarpaulin is very important. But as you can see, a lot of it has been uh, tied up, and if we get a hotter time, we can even tie them up even more and take them higher. But now that it's not very hot, it's not necessary that they are tied up and taken up to the top. You know, this is just enough. Currently, we've been in a rainy season. You know, for us here in Uganda, we don't really have winter and summer. We have rainy seasons and then we have dry spells. During the dry spells, it gets way hotter. During the rainy season, I believe the rains cool down the areas a bit more. So because of that, we've been performing a little bit better. So as you can see, the house was upgraded. And this is something I've always talked about in the past. You know, when you're starting a farm, the most important thing is to ensure that you get going. It's not very important that you have very nice structures, very nicely designed structures. The most important thing is to get money coming in. Once you get money coming in, you're understanding the business. It becomes quite easy for you to do other things because that means from the money that's coming into your pocket, you can upgrade, you can get better structures. You know, you can do nicer things. But at the beginning, as long as the chickens can utilize the house and the house can bring you money and it's structurally sound, it won't fall down on the chickens, it's good to go. This is what you can see over here. We've upgraded our house. We've come from the chicken houses that were completely set up using poles. And currently we have a better chicken house using bricks. Simply because we managed to start up, you don't want to use all your money when you're starting out to build a house. You know, it's the chickens that are going to bring you money. So you want to spend as much of the money on the chickens and the feed as possible. And you can later on improve the structures. Of course, it's, it's, it's a bit expensive having to do the work twice. But hey, it's better you do the work twice than to never do it. Because at the beginning, you could be saving up all this money trying to get enough money to build the structures, enough money to buy the chickens, enough money to put in the feed and everything and the equipment. But then you never ever get to do it because it becomes too expensive, you know. It's, it's very, very expensive using brick comp compared to using, for example, poles, the eucalyptus poles. Very expensive, probably three or four times as much in terms of expense. So you want to make sure that you invest where it's important. And you can see that our houses have been built with biosecurity as a paramount feature. Right at the very entrance of this area, we have a food dip to ensure that everyone who gets in is disinfected. But even before you enter the chicken house itself, at each and every entrance, we have a food dip. Very important. Inside here is a disinfectant, which is used every time before you get into the chicken house to ensure that you don't bring diseases into the house. So let's get in, guys. Again, we'll get back. 
And as you can see, our broiler breeders are feeding. They are feeding. So this is just one of the pens. You know, I'm trying to avoid moving to all the pens. This is just one of the pens with perfect aeration. I'm inside here, you guys, and I feel very comfortable. I feel very good because the aeration is perfect on the sides, as you can see. There's enough air coming inside. When you take a look at the birds themselves, they are feeding. So we have enough feeders on the inside. What we do is almost like floor feeding. So the feeders, as you can see, are almost empty. The birds have made them empty. We have another type of feeder here, which is almost improvised, but the purpose is to ensure that all the birds can feed at the same time. So right now, most of them are done with the feed, which is understandable that they are starting to move around. But earlier on, all the birds were standing in a single place and they were feeding. Because we have enough feeding space, you don't want to give competition to the birds, while the birds are literally just fighting to get their food. Currently, this is better. All the birds are feeding from the feeding trays and they are enjoying their food. We have our drinkers over here as you can see. These are our automatic drinkers. We have our feeders and these being broiler breeders, you know, they don't feed the entire day. You want to limit their weight because they are going to be laying eggs, yeah? So there are particular things that we do to ensure that the birds meet their target weight, they don't become too fat. Because if we leave food to be present 24-7, they are going to become overweight. They are going to become go beyond their target weights, they become overweight and that becomes a problem for us. So it's something that we try to avoid uh, by ensuring that we restrict their food. So in a while they're going to be done with their feed and all the feeders are going to be lifted up, they're going to be taken off the floor and then they will wait to be fed probably later on in the day depending on the feeding schedule or tomorrow. Yeah. So they are probably done with their feed for today. Literally they're now just going to be growing their bodies on what they have fed for about one hour in the morning because they are broilers. Their bodies are made in such a way that they are supposed to put on weight. So it's from here that we produce our day old broiler chicks that we supply as our farm up chicks. And guys, these are really, really good chicks. Um, from a lot of the clients that we've had, even from me personally, I've kept some of the birds uh, to ensure that I can test them out myself. They grow up very nicely, you know. They put on a lot of weight. I've had some of them simply die from from having too much weight, too much weight killing them. And so we, we have to restrict some of their food to ensure that they don't die, you know, they don't die from, from being overweight. So this is very exciting. So if you want to place orders for farm up chicks, come on, don't be shy, don't be scared. These are good birds, you know, you want to get the very best broilers available in Uganda. These are very good birds. Again, um, unfortunately, currently I can't meet any demand outside Uganda. I have way more demand than I can handle right here in Uganda. So come on, place your orders uh, if you're in Uganda as we figure out a way of expanding and supplying places outside Uganda. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell so that you never miss out on an upload. Lots of love. Bye-bye.